Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Bass Quest. Today we're going to talk about the mayfly hatch. Now everybody knows it's a great time to catch a ton of fish, but a lot of guys struggle to catch really big fish, and it's something I've been able to do pretty consistently. So what we're going to do, I'm going to have a montage of some B-roll and some fish catches, then we're going to break down some of my tips and techniques that I use to catch bigger than average fish during the mayfly hatch consistently. So let's just jump into it. It's a big one right there. Hold on. It's the same fish. No, it's not. It's a big one. Might be a big smallmouth. You really? Let's go, big smallmouth. Let's go, dude. <laughs> oh. oh, it's a good one. Here he comes. He's coming up. You really? Oh, man. It's Even good. bigger. Even bigger, bro. I did. Keep your rod up. Keep your rod up. Keep going. Keep reeling. Keep good? pressure on him. Nice work. Get the net, dude. Get the net. You're reeling. You gotta keep reeling. You don't, you don't keep reeling. I am. You gonna come off? Oh, keep reeling, bro. <laughs> Real. I am. I trying to do. I need the net. It's too powerful. It's <laughs> it too powerful. All right. Oh god. He's mean. He's a mean one. I'm great at this game. <laughs> you are great at this game. Look at that. Oh, they're, getting, they're getting even bigger, bro. There's a bunch of them right there, isn't there? I got it. I also. How is you a big oh, dude? Man, that's like a two pounder. One, two, three. Bye bye. Go all the way. There's one. Go. Real. Real. You got a real. You can't catch him like that. Look at this. Look at this. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, what did you see? We got two fish in the boat. We got two fish in the boat. Uh-huh. See that? Mm-hmm. That one's got some weird stuff going on with him. Yeah, I don't want to use that one in the boat. Okay, Alright, I'm gonna cast it and I'm gonna let you here's what you do, alright? Yeah. You just barely pop it like that. Pop it? Like a pop? Yep, and like we got one. Oh man. That one's big. Oh. He's on. He's on again. Uh, Tristan the catcher of the day. Good job, bro. Mm -hmm. you got it no, you got a reel though, see? See? Oh. What did I tell you about the reeling thing? You can't just pull, all right? Because it puts slack in the line. You got to Yep, that's because you didn't reel. You never listened to me. Oh, God, we got another reel. Oh, you got off. Oh, <laughs> oh, there's a nice one, reel, reel. Oh, oh, oh. small mouth. It's your first small mouth. Oh, oh, he's got it too. Oh, he's got it too. Oh, man, it's a big one. Oh, God. Look at the size of that dude, bro. Oh, that's so big. 
Oh man. How are we even gonna get this out of him, guys? Look at this. There we go. Look at there. Nice work, bro. Oh, he ate it, didn't he? Fish in front of us here. Got a big one. Got a big one, bro. Oh man, he's mad. He's jumping all over the place. Here you go. Oh, it's a good one. Whoa. We got him. Nice one, bro. There's a big one. Golly. Big old small mouth. <laughs> big one, Tristan. Big one. Yeah, go for it. Woo! I got a big one. It's bigger than another one. Oh, nice one, dude. Oh, that's big. It's a big small mount. <laughs> He's gonna bleed. What's that? Pterodactyl. Woo, that's like a two and a half, bro. Throw that in the water. Man, that's it's gonna fall in. Oops. I did not see that even coming. Fish? Mm hmm. You got two fish. You have two fish. Yes. It's a double fish. It's a Tristan double. What in the world are you doing? Let's do baby fish. Now this blessing. How did I do that? No idea. I've never seen that during the willow fly hatch before. Never done a double in. Good job, bro. All right. Hope you all enjoyed that footage of me and Tristan catching a bunch of fish during the mayfly hatch. Um, it's something that's still going on Chickamauga. It's just about finding the right places to target it and to, to catch the big fish. So what we're going to do is jump into that right now. Okay, the mayfly hatch here on Chickamauga tends to be between June and August, with the peak period being in July, usually around 4th of July Independence Day. Now, for you guys in different states or working with different lakes, usually around that 80 degree water temperature, sometimes 85, 90 degree, depending on the area, is when you'll start to see those hatches occur. It's important, though, to realize that that doesn't last. So if you're fishing a tournament or something like that, don't expect those mayflies to be there if you saw them on a practice day the next day, because a lot of times they're not there. They have about a 20 24 to 48 hour lifespan um, so it's it's something that happens and then they die off very quickly uh, it's important to note that when you're looking to fish mayflies and target them specifically as a pattern you want to find areas where there's a consistent hatch in other words it's not just you know the big hatch they're all over the lake I want to find an area where week after week after week there are consistent hatches that are smaller but they're in one specific area. And what that does is it allows those bluegill and other bait fish and game fish for that matter to find those areas and then they'll just hunker down there because you got to think there's larvae that are coming up that from the bottom of the uh, lake there and then they shed like a molt of small skin and that becomes the mayfly that flies up into the trees. And that's why a lot of times right before a mayfly hatch you'll have like a dead period. You'll have a day and you're like, why are the fish not biting? You'll see clouds of something in the water. It's like interference on your graph and fish suspended everywhere, but nothing's biting. What they're doing is they're eating that larva as it's coming up to the surface from the bottom to emerge as a mayfly. Okay, talking about areas with a consistent hatch, you're looking for spots where the most larva after the, the mayflies hatch and spawn, where are the most larva going to be deposited? Now in a river system lake like ours, 
the current is going to push the majority of those larvae into key areas. Now that might be a channel swing bank. That's a really good example of a deeper area where there's already big fish where you can catch a big one. Um, areas where the current's pushing right into some kind of a bluff wall or some kind of other structure. Areas where you've got an eddy, so say you've got a break in the current itself with a flatter area where you had an eddy line. Now a lot of times the larva will be deposited there. Um, areas where you've got a secondary channel, maybe cutting off of the, the edge of a flat. I've noticed that's a really good area. When you have a lot of current on the main river, it'll push back current or reverse current into those areas which will deposit a lot of larva. Areas like that, spots like that, will have a consistent hatch. In other words, the, the last year's mayfly hatch, most of the larva ended up in those areas. And it'll have hatches week after week after week and it'll be consistent and keep those fish there. And not only that, you've got deeper water access, which means that you have the potential to catch bigger fish and all kinds of species of fish. I mean, you'll catch walleye, you'll catch catfish, a little bit of everything during the mayfly hats, not just the bass. Okay, talking about key baits to catch these fish, if I'm targeting an area I know that has a lot of smallmouth in it, I like to use a popper as a top water bait. Um, that little feather or something about it, you catch a ton of bluegill, but it seems like it's something that those smallmouth can get into their mouth a little easier. You notice Tristan and I were using that. If I'm targeting big bass though, like big largemouth, I like a spook. So something a little bit louder, a little bit bigger presence. And that's a good thing to note. You know, the smallmouth it seems like, and, and the spotted bass as well, um, they seem to key in directly on the bugs themselves. So they'll eat the, the mayflies a lot. And the largemouth will too, but if you're wanting to catch like a five pound, six pound, seven pound uh, largemouth, a lot of times they're not actually eating the bugs. What they're eating is the tons and tons of bluegill that are coming up there and eating the bugs. So you gotta think, what am I gonna throw in there that's gonna imitate what those largemouth are eating? One bait that I found that is excellent for that is some kind of a floating jerk bait. Uh, floating jerk bait is excellent as well as a suspending jerk bait that only runs maybe four feet or so. That tends to get the big fish. I'm gonna pull up a picture here, show you guys of a, a really nice one I caught the other day during the mayfly hatch. And then another option that you can do is of course, like a, a topwater frog. That's a really good one because you can skip it, you know, up under lay downs and stuff. It really depends on the areas you're fishing. You know, if you're fishing like a bluff wall or something like that, you don't have as many overhangs and things to get in your way, but there's also some banks that the, the mayflies are on where you gotta get way back into an area to get that big fish, especially during the middle part of the day. So frogs, spooks, um, a buzz bait is a good option during the mayfly hatch as well, um, but, but things that, that imitate the actual bait themselves. Now if it's the middle of the day, a lot of times all the fish will push lower in the water column. And the reason they do that is because the, the mayflies are not swarming, quote unquote, at that time. So what I mean by that is in the morning and the afternoon is when they tend to be out flying. And when they're, when they're flying like that, they're usually uh, mating and that gives them a good opportunity when they fall down, the fish will you know, react and eat the, eat the mayflies. So um, during the middle part of the day when they're not doing that, it's a great time to throw like a big shaky head worm or a jig or something to get underneath there and maybe get those suspended fish on the way down. A lot of times they are suspended, but they're pretty deep in the water column. So something that sinks a little slower or sinks a little faster is a good option. So maybe instead of a half ounce jig or a half ounce shaky head, you throw a 3 16 or you throw maybe a three quarter ounce jig, something to get a reaction style bite out of those kind of negative, negative mood fish there. Now one thing I do to catch bigger and better fish during the mayfly hatch is I cover a lot of water. It's real tempting, especially during a big mayfly hatch when you've got the trees are just black with willow flies on both sides of the lake to stop and just fish and fish and fish and just and beat the bank. But you have to think about it just like there's no willow flies there. It's the same thing as fishing a lake that has standing timber or like Okeechobee, like me and Mikey fished the other day where it's all grass. You gotta fish key areas. You gotta fish the structure, not the cover, so to speak. So where should the big fish be? You know, they might be on that point where the current comes in. They might be on that channel swing. Where are the big fish gonna be? And that is where you're gonna fish. When you get there to those key areas, you look around, you know, your eyes are looking. Do I see a bunch of bluegill, especially if I'm fishing for big largemouth? Where are the bluegill at? If I'm not seeing bluegill busting everywhere or I'm not seeing just a bunch of them hanging up under the trees and things like that, well, that's probably not an area that you're gonna catch a real big bass on. So be looking for things like that. Once you find the key area, 
So you got a key big fish area. It's loaded with bait, loaded with willow flies. Well, that's probably gonna be the spot you're gonna catch the big one. So that's a good time to stop and fish that area. So it's very important, again, to cover that water. Now another thing, especially during the middle part of the day, remember I talked about those fish kind of being inactive and you know, they're kind of in a negative mood. Well, sometimes you can actually artificially create your own swarm. And what I mean by that is maybe you have that hollow body frog tied on or a Texas rig or that jig, something weedless that you can throw up into the tree and shake it a little bit and get a bunch of those mayflies to fall down and start to swarm and then it gets all the, the bait fish going and then the big fish get fired up with that. Another thing that I've found is if I get through a, maybe a key stretch, I know this 50 yards is a good spot where I can catch a big one, I'll run down with my boat and hit the trees with a paddle and I knock all those willow flies loose and I just go on. Well, in about 10 minutes, I can come back around and fish that area and catch a bunch of fish. All right, I hope y'all enjoyed that. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, ring the bell for notifications so that you actually know when I post a new video. And as always, guys, I hope this week finds you out on the water and I'll catch you there. Godzilla, is he in the water? Is he swimming? Ugh, dang it. Gotta turn around the green buoy just gotcha. if we can make it past the green buoy we'll survive. We got, uh, we got it. Checkpoint gotcha, gotcha. reached. Gotcha, gotcha. uh, he's got a hold of our tail. Oh no, no, no. Uh, got free. We got free. Got free. Got free. Got on the left side. Spinosaurus. Oh wait, there's a Spinosaurus over there! Oh god. Oh my gosh!